Today we continue in our study of um, an important chapter, and that is how Satan would tempt the Lord Jesus Christ and how the Lord Jesus would defeat Satan. Now, we must not just uh, think it was easy for the Lord Jesus to defeat Satan. We must note that he uh, you know, was very much man, the son of man. And um, Satan was allowed to use whatever means to test the Lord Jesus, to tempt him, to make him fall. Of course, the good uh, news is the Lord Jesus Christ never fell and he overcame. But this is what we want to learn because we will be uh, you know, tested, we will be tempted by the evil one and, uh, you know, there is a spiritual warfare that we must note. Okay, so we begin with the word of prayer and let's, uh, let's seek the Lord to help us to learn and to learn this well. How can we have a faith that is strong, uh, steadfast, that we will not succumb to the temptations of the evil one? Well, let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the Gospels written, preserved for us. We thank you for your word given, and we pray that we would uh, take careful heed to learn from the Lord Jesus Christ in how we can cultivate a faith that is able to overcome the temptations of the evil one. We pray that you would bless our study as we begin. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to look at Matthew 4, but before we begin there, let's take a look at the book of Revelations, chapter 12. And Revelations 12 gives us a vision of what's happening. How is Satan involved and uh, right? We must remember, it's not the Lord Jesus that Satan will attack. He will, if he can tempt the Lord Jesus Christ, none of us are actually spared, right? Now, let's take a look at Revelations 12, and we read verse 7. A war broke out in heaven. Michael and his ark and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Now, this is what we are looking at. So he's called the dragon, he's called the serpent of old, he's called the devil, he's called Satan, and we see the war that was began in heaven is now brought down into the world. He was cast to the earth, his angels were also cast with him. And then we read, then I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of His Christ have come. So, at some point in time, there was a war that broke out in heaven. And the evil one and his angel, the demons that were there, they were all once angels, were cast into the world for the longest time. Until the Lord Jesus Christ came, right? Now, it was a very dark world, and there they ruled the place. Now, we read, until the Lord Jesus Christ came, then we see this, the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. Now, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them 
before our God day and night has been cast down. Now, he is called the deceiver, the accuser. And this would give us a glimpse of how Satan will attack. He will, how does he tempt? Well, we talk about temptations. And it's not going to be a straightforward temptation. He is going to deceive. He, well, if he, he will accuse. He will have many means. He can cast doubts. He can instill fear. Now, remember, this is a spiritual warfare that is going on. And the hope of humanity lies in this. The kingdom of our God has come. That's when the Lord Jesus Christ came. And He will be tested. And He will be tempted. Now, if Jesus failed and was defeated, we are literally all sunk. But because He triumphed, this is our glorious hope. The power of His God, and there we go, the power of Christ, and we see how Jesus overcame. And now, how does that affect us? Verse 11, and they overcame, they meaning the believers, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Okay, so we must bear these things in, in mind, right? Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And the Lord, and we learn how He defeated Satan. And because He defeated Satan, it provided, uh, you know, the, the ramifications after that is now believers, those who are children of God, right? So those who are believers can overcome. Now, this is why it is so important. How will they overcome? One, by the blood of the Lamb, which tells us through, first, there must be, uh, you know, how do you deal with the problem of sin? The guilt that weighs in our heart by the blood of the Lamb where there is atonement of sin. So it's not by our own efforts. Right? Now, alone, now, then by the word of of their testimony. Right? Meaning to say, the word of their testimony is, the idea of testimony is that of bearing witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, these people are witnesses of the Lord. Right? Now, what kind of witness now, when we go and read for, they did not love their lives to the death. Meaning to say, this would tell you the kind of witness that they are. The word witness can, is actually where we find, get the word martyrs. They are not afraid to die for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Such is their love for the Lord. They did not love this life to the death. Now, with this kind of faith, they overcame Satan. Right? So this is what we are looking at. It's, please note, it's not an automatic thing. Okay, Jesus defeated Satan, therefore automatically Satan is afraid of us, he will, we can just defeat him just like that. That's not what it is. 
right? So we mustn't just see it as automatic. We must find a faith that understands the significance of that atonement of the Lord Jesus. That we can you know, look at sin and commit it to the Lord and find the strength from the Lord to say we are freed. This is Romans chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. Slay, sin is no longer my taskmaster. The Lord is my master. Right? What is my testimony? What is the word of my testimony? Will anything, can Satan hurl things at me to deny my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? What about even the threat of death and those who overcame the evil one when did not love this life to the death and they will stand firm in their faith in the Lord. Okay, so this is what we want to learn. On the one hand, we look at how Jesus uh, defeated. Again, it was not automatic. Because He's the Son of God, He can just defeat Satan just like that. We must learn from the Lord. Look at the Lord. What was it that was inside Him that was able to do this? Okay? Now, this is the, this is the gospel writers. Were there more than three temptations? Perhaps. Jesus, according to Luke's account, was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Right? If you compare Luke's account with Matthew's account, the order of the temptations are different. They both begin with the same one. Rock into bread. But the next few two are actually different order. So, does that mean, uh, you know, the gospel writer get it wrong? No. The focus is not the order. The focus are the three temptations and how the Lord Jesus Christ defeated Satan. That is what we are going to, uh, to, to want to learn. So, this is why we are studying it slowly, bit by bit, until we are able to appreciate this, understand this, apply this into our own life. Okay? So let's take a look at Matthew again, and then we uh, read uh, Matthew, uh, review it. Okay? Verse 1. Now, let's look at the Lord. He, there was the Lord Jesus. He was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter had come, came, to, uh, came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. Immediately Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, this is what we read last week. So what do we see? We see the features that was first in the life of the Lord Jesus. How was Jesus able to be that strong to overcome Satan? Let's look at the strong features in the life of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. One, He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Now, that is an important thing to note. Right? So, all the things that the Lord Jesus Christ have here is something that we must have too. So, it's not unique just to Jesus, okay? If Jesus defeated Satan, 
because the Son of God, the power of God was there, and he just defeated him like that, and uh, only unique to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then how do we overcome the evil one? We are not the Lord Jesus Christ. But here he shows us how to defeat the evil one, right? As an example, and how he did it. Now, what are the things that are needed? The Spirit of God in our life, right? He was the, the, the Lord Jesus. He was conscious of the Holy Spirit, of depending on the Holy Spirit. He was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. These are things that did not just cultivate there and then, but this has been cultivated his whole life. To, how do you know where the Spirit of God would lead? If the Spirit of God was to lead to the wilderness to be tempted, to suffer, to be attacked, would you go? Can you still trust God in this one? You see? So a lot of the time people talk about being led by the Holy Spirit is to their own advantage, or see where the Spirit of God will lead me. It's more of a personal agenda and advantage. Nobody talks about being led by the Holy Spirit through challenges, through trials. Now, what if this is part of it? See, there is a sensitivity of the Lord to trust the Father, and He knew this is where the Spirit of God is leading Him. Will He Submit to that leading. Right? So, the Spirit of God. Now, two, the practice of prayer. 40 days, 40 nights. I think most of us cannot sustain uh, uh, one day, <laughs> let alone 40 days, 40 nights in prayer. Such was the discipline, such was the focus to sustain prayer. Remember the disciples? And there they were, and Jesus tell them, okay, this hour is coming, this is a dark hour, and watch and pray. And they fell asleep. And there we go. You know, your heart might be in the right place, but you don't have the strength to do anything in the hour of trial, there's no strength. That's challenging. Again, this is something the Lord has cultivated. So these are things that we must look at very carefully and ask ourselves, am I cultivating this? Right? Now, the practice of prayer was obviously there. And then we see how the Lord Jesus knew the Lord's Word, he could recall the Lord's Word, he would uh, apply the Lord's Word appropriately, and that kept him. Right? He did not just have one Bible verse. Okay, this is my favorite Bible verse because it brings me comfort. There is a Word there. Heart, mind searches the Scriptures, and this is a Word that will keep him focus and not yield to any temptation. Right? So there we see the strong features in the life of the Lord. And we look at our own life and we ask, what are strong features? Are there any strong features? Are we spirit-filled? Are we people of prayer? Is the Word of God something that we can handle well and apply it, it just comes to us. Now, if none of these things are there, then wisely we must look at it and say, okay, now let me do this. If not, how am I going to withstand any temptation that comes? Right? Now, the Lord Jesus was tempted or tested how was he tested physically in the wilderness? 
He was tested mentally. He was tested emotionally. He was tested spiritually. So we mustn't think that Satan's temptation only has these three. It will come as the same three. It doesn't. The three temptations just helps us that we can be emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually tested. So if the mind is not strong, it will break. If physically we are unable to cope with uh, you know, suffering, pain, and we're sunk. Emotionally, right? The heart is a big part. You know, it could be fear, it could be sorrow, it could be anguish, it could be our emotions can often get the better of us. Spiritually, as well. So, it can come at any one of these or all of it. For the Lord Jesus, it is all for Imagine the mental strength that is needed. <clears throat> you are there, you've been there 40 days, 40 nights, and you are hungry. The mind is just thinking, I need to eat food. You know, just survival instinct. One must have such mental strength to still focus on God and His Word. That is tremendous. Right? So this is what we are looking at. And how did the Lord Jesus defeat Satan? He will not yield himself at what, for one moment to what Satan says. <clears throat> Here's the word of Satan versus the word of God. All right? That's what Satan was doing. He, in the Garden of Eden, he spoke to Eve. And sadly, Eve entertained the thought of what Satan was saying. She knew exactly what God said, and then now she's thinking about what Satan is saying. And perhaps Satan was right. And she ate of the fruit that she was told specifically not to. Right? So there we go. Jesus will not yield himself to the word of Satan. Whatever comes, he is not going to. Now, he loved the Father and he would never disobey him. And then he would submit himself to his Father and the Word of God. Now, these are the things that we uh, must see. <clears throat> now, we're going to look at the second temptation of, uh, that Satan used against Jesus. In, in Luke, this is the third one, but we're going to read Matthew. So, this is the second one. Okay, now, let's take a look at this and, and see what we can learn. The second temptation appears to be even more cunning than the first. Right? So, it can become even more cunning. Now, the first one, obviously, Satan uh, was defeated. He failed. Now, here comes a second one. Verse 5, this time is not just words. He will take a hold of Jesus and bring him to a place. And this is not a, you know, <clears throat> is a place that Jesus would know. This is called the holy city. This is Jerusalem. This is where the temple of God is. And he brought him up right on top the highest point of the temple, the pinnacle, and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. 
for it is written. Now, Satan is the one saying this. Okay? Jesus says, it is written. Satan can also say, it is written. And he cited Psalm 91. Two verses in particular. You know, talking about how God shall give His angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Right? Now, this is Satan and he too. Does he know the Scriptures? Yes. Right? Now, not the same, okay? When the Lord Jesus Christ say it is written. Now, his focus is uh, here's the Word of God, there's obedience to the Word of God, his love for the Father is there, and he will abide by. <clears throat> Here is Satan, and he will take the Word of God, he knows it, he will take it and find whatever can be utilized for your own advantage. Now, that's a world of difference. See? It's not enough to just know the Scriptures. It really isn't enough. Does our knowledge of the Scripture match our love for God? If there is knowledge and no love for God and obedience to God, the Scriptures will always be applied wrong. We might want to know that there are many atheists out there and agnostics that actually knows the Scriptures in terms of knowledge far better than many Christians, unfortunately. But ask them whether they love God and believe in Him and obey Him, the answer is certainly no. So we mustn't be surprised and say, whoa, how come Satan knows the Scriptures? How come Satan can be in the holy city? We often think Satan cannot be in any holy places. He is scared of holy places. Remember this, he has the audacity to start a war in heaven. He is not going to be afraid like that. Can he come to a holy place? Absolutely. Can he take Jesus? Of course, these permissions were granted. And they put him up in the highest place and ask him, jump. Right? If you are the Son of God. Now, if you are the Son of God is not a statement of doubt. Jesus, Satan knows who he was talking to. He was not questioning Jesus. He knew exactly who Jesus was, is. He knows that he is the Son of God. Imagine, the angels would fall to their knees when they meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, that's his defiance, that is his arrogance, and there we go. He knew exactly he, who he was talking to. And he will attempt to test and to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. So we mustn't be in any way uh, ignorant about things like this. Can Satan test us in our knowledge? Can he test us 
in our obedience to God. And He's going to try. Remember, it's not an outright thing. You look at this very, very carefully. Deception is not always fake news. It's not always totally untrue. Deception, all you need is half-truths. It sounds, it's, hey, this is citing the Scriptures. Right? What is the false part about this? Psalm 91 was written by David. It was a time where he went through a real uh, difficult time and he looks back and how did he survive the many wars that he fought. The presence of God was there. He would seek God and he would inquire, God, shall I go into this battle? If I go in, Will you deliver me? And God, well, only when God says, yes, I'll deliver you, he will go. This is when David was seeking, walking with God. And so David was able to write the way he did. Right? God, because he loved me, because he set his heart upon me, I will deliver him, I will hear him. See, there is a prayer element. And he will... And how David cannot see angels, of course. And he, he, how did he survive that? So he can use some uh, holy imagination. The angels were there to protect. The angels were there to deliver him. Psalm 91 was never about willingly going out to endanger your life and see whether God would protect you and deliver you. He will intervene. Of course not. If you put your life at risk, see, this is how some will, will look at it. See, God will always protect us as if we're invincible. Right? If you are truly trusting in God, no need to vaccinate, don't need to wear masks. Don't you, if you do that, see, you're living in fear. Can God not deliver and trust you? What's the difference between what Satan is saying and people who speak like that? If you willingly, knowingly, purposely endanger your life, the scriptures like this doesn't apply. You see how subtle this is? And people will talk about, as sad to say, as Christians. Right? As Christians. Now, there we go. Well, they will cite the Scriptures as well. Is there love for the Lord? Hardly. Is there love for His people? How could you? It's only thinking of yourself. Jesus did not think about Himself. His focus has always been the Father and His will. Now there is the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. If He threw Himself down, He would die. Of course, He's not going to do that. Right? So this is very, very important that we understand Deception is very, very real. And it's not just knowledge of God, as in knowledge. Is there love? Is there obedience? Is there wisdom? Is there sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit? To prayer, there's communion with God. And there, you put it all together, then the Word of God is properly handled. Satan has none of them. Okay, so it's not just citing the Scriptures. Just because a person cites the Scriptures, then, wow, we have to, uh, well, we better listen to the person. Wait a minute, did you cite it correctly? And look at the answer of the Lord Jesus. Very sharp, very strong. He's not going to uh, give one moment of 
you know, and he says to Satan, Jesus said to him, he's not even going to, uh, okay, correct him. Okay, how do you, that's you're talking about Psalm 90. He's not even going to engage him. Jesus said, it is written again. Again is to follow on the first word, right? Man shall live, not by bread alone, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So there Satan goes, oh, okay, I know the word of God too, and, and ah, let me cite the scriptures. Now, see, this is the word of God. You said man shall live by every word. Now, live by this. Every word, right? Live by this. Now, Jesus replies, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Direct. Now, you might want to know this text is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. And this was a command that came from God Himself. Right? And this was a command given to the people of Israel. The generation that came out of uh, Egypt, and they were in the wilderness, they were tested by the elements, hunger, and they began to, that God provided manna, and Moses taught them to trust in God, and God will provide There they were, and they began. Can God provide a banquet in the wilderness? Can God do this? Can God do that? And there we go. If God really is who He is, then do this for us. Then we will see He is a trustworthy God. And God was angry with that generation. Do not test the Lord your God. Does God need to be tested to prove Himself? See, there are people who say things like that. If God is who He is, then why don't He stop the war in Ukraine? Why don't He stop the bomb from landing on the hospital, killing so many children, killing so many women? If God can do that, then yeah, there He is God. But if He can't, then He is not, He's not, He has failed kind of a thing. See, this is how people will talk about things like that. For the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. We will never, you will never abuse. Can we trust Him? Can we still trust Him in the hard times? Can we trust Him where we can see so many suffering, if, even if the suffering afflicts you personally? Because one day, the Lord Jesus will have nails driven into His hand and feet. And He will hang on the cross. And even then, He will trust the Father. That's how He, defe- he did not love this life to the death. And Satan had no power over Him. He could not make Jesus sway from his trust, his obedience and love for God. That is a tremendous example. Right? So this is what we are looking at. Jesus saw straight through and he is not going to fall for Satan's lure to test. See, when Satan said what he did, he cited the scriptures What was it? Jesus knew exactly what it was. This, see, he's going to lure him to test God. Jump. What was that temptation? The first one satisfied your hunger. The second one, test God, you know, test God. And that was the sin. Sometimes we can't see the sinful part of it. We don't see why it's such a problem. Jesus could. It was so clear to him. You shall not test the Lord your God. 
Now there he was. And he again defeated Satan. Okay, so this is something that we must look at. And then it ends there. And then we look at the third temptation, which we will take uh, next, next week. Right? So what do we learn from this? Many lessons are to be learned. Really, many lessons are to be learned. So, well, there are people who cite the scriptures and all over the place don't, don't, don't need to worry about things like that. Is there love for the Lord and His Word? Is there obedience to God? You see people citing a lot of the time. They cite to their own advantage. They cite, they just string things together. That's how Satan does it too. He strings it together to say what he wanted to say, to fulfill his own agenda. Now that is not going to be the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright? Let's look at the Lord Jesus. Let's look at the features that was in His life. There is a sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. There is communion with God in prayer. There is the Word of God in His... His, his is, the Word of God is not just knowledge. It's obedience to what God has said. You've got to see all of it together. Does it harmonize with all that God has said? Right? So, certainly, he did not just have one Bible verse. Man shall live by bread, oh, not live by bread alone, by every word. And then Satan counters. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ replies straight to the point, you shall not test. You do not uh, abuse the promises of God like that. You do not use the Word of God back at God and that tests him in any way. Now, that was the example of the Lord Jesus. Right? Now, what about for us? How do we apply this for ourselves? We see the Lord's example. Our challenge is to cultivate these, the things that are there. Now, we have a word in James that is going to be helpful. Let there be encouragement that come from this word. In James chapter 1, I, in James chapter 1, now this is an uplifting word. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. And the word is endure. Right? For the Lord Jesus Christ, He would endure 40 days and 40 nights. Are we called to endure times when we are tested too? And that would be certainly possible. Right? So, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Now, there we go. So, must we read the Word of God? Must we know the Word of God? Absolutely. But knowing the Word of God, remember, must be matched by love for Him. And I want to encourage us all to set some time to come for this family camp in April. The theme of love for God is so absolutely vital. It's something that we, not, we must not just, okay, oh yes, I love God, and, and it's just there. Can that love be tested? Can it really be tested? Because it will. The person who can endure temptation, they will be approved. And the Lord says, blessed is... The, and James says, blessed is the man because he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised. 
right? This represents triumph. This represents, uh, you know, we, uh, not defeated by the evil one. We don't need to live defeated lives, sad, defeated. Can we triumph? Now, the example of the Lord Jesus, the book of Revelation, now James. All right? Now let this word encourage us. Let's be challenged to how do we endure while well, we've got to cultivate this love a little bit more. It's important to have knowledge, but love must be there too, to match. Without knowledge, this love cannot be cultivated in any way significant. So you got to have the both, right? But you can't just have knowledge alone without love. It's not an automatic thing. If I have knowledge, I can overcome the evil one. If I have knowledge, straight away I have love. Nothing is automatic. That love will be tested. When Peter was tested, he failed. Miserably. He was so depressed, he gave up. Too ashamed to follow Jesus anymore. It took the Lord Jesus Christ to reach out to him and to ask him, do you love me? More than these. Three times. Three times he denied Jesus. Three times Jesus will ask him. And Peter dare not to say, yes, I love you. As of like in the past, he would say, I would even die for you. Peter tested, failed, humbled, now starting rock bottom, said, Lord, you know, you know, you know best, you know me, I do. But let me start here. And there the Lord graciously took him back, follow me. Are you willing to start all over again? Follow me. Right? Now, Peter began to follow the Lord, not like his old self anymore. Old self, confident in himself. Old self, presumptuous. Old self, so certain of himself. Now we see a very different Peter, humbled, dependent on the Lord and his word. He would just hold fast to the word of the Lord given to him. I think we all need this. Right? That love will be tested. How will we fare? Let's learn from the scriptures. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love. Let's ask the Lord to help us cultivate this love, you know, create in us a heart of love if it's not there. And then for us to nurture it, to cultivate it, to find every opportunity to express it. And let's not take it for granted. Okay? Let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that as we read this word, that you would help us to come humbly to you, knowing that the only way to overcome the evil one is that there is a genuine heart of love for you. We dare not say that this love for you is strong. There is some love because of that you first love us but we need a love that is strong and steadfast. We pray that you would help us cultivate a deeper, stronger love. 
that we will not keep on failing the test, that we will not keep on being defeated by the temptations that are around us, that we can triumph, that we can succeed. Help us, Father, to learn from the Lord Jesus Christ, to be encouraged by what James had written and to bear in mind the vision in the book of Revelation. Let this love be in our heart. Let it be developed strongly. We ask that you would hear this, our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.